Hey guys, today we got a 2015 Isuzu NPR on the lift next to me, and I'm gonna take you underneath and show you how to determine whether your tie rod ends need to be replaced. Uh, it's a super uh, common problem. It's one of the first suspension parts in my experiences that gets wore out. It's easy to determine whether it needs to be replaced. Some common symptoms are wiggle room or slop at the 12 o'clock position on your steering wheel. Uh, weird tread patterns forming on your tires. We're gonna go underneath and I'm gonna show you how to determine whether they're bad. And we're gonna go through a tool list on what you need to take them out and reinstall them. So let's get started. Your tie rod ends that we're gonna replace are on the ends right here. And in between the tie rod end and the adjuster tube is a jam nut. And if we pan over to the other side, follow this long tube and your other tie rod end mirrors it on this side with another jam nut. Uh, these jam nuts on the driver's side are reverse thread and on the passenger side, they're normal thread. That way, whenever you get an alignment done, Without removing these tie rod ends, the alignment shop can crack these adjuster nuts right or these jam nuts right here, and then they can screw the the adjuster tube right to left, depending on what the uh, alignment calls for. But you can the way I determine whether these need to be uh, replaced or not is all you got to do is grab a hold of it, which I can do it with one hand because these are so wore out, and you can just do this motion back and forth, and you shouldn't be able to move this adjuster tube by hand, but you can see this one has wore out. So we're going to go through a little tool list and I'm gonna show you everything you need to get them out. This is the tools you're gonna to need. Get you a half inch breaker bar, a half inch ratchet, 24 millimeter socket, pickle fork, a pair of docks, and a good sized hammer. We're starting over here on the passenger side and you want to take this cotter pin out and remove this castle nut. So get your dikes and just start prying against this castle nut and get it, or this cotter pin and get it straightened out. You can just pinch it on this side once you get it out part of the way and it should just roll out. It might take a little bit of motivation to get it out of there, but it should come out pretty easy. Once you get that removed, get your 24 millimeter socket and your breaker bar. You're gonna break this side loose. Switch over to your ratchet. And remove this castle nut the rest of the way. The last step to getting this tie rod in now is getting your pickle fork and your hammer. And you're gonna drive your pickle fork on the lower half of this boot right here. So come to the lower side of it and drive your pickle fork in right there.
Now we've moved over here to the driver's side. Two tips that I'd recommend. I didn't say it in the beginning. Um, if you have a little pick, this area around this castle nut, you don't have a lot of room. So if crud is built up in here, it might be difficult to get your socket on this castle nut. And another thing, when you're doing this job, get the thin wall, get the thinnest thin walled socket you have. Like an impact socket is not gonna fit on this castle nut very well because there's just, the way the castle nut sits down inside this arm here, it doesn't give you a lot of room to work with. But we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna remove our cotter pin, straighten it out and pry it out. It's also a little tedious getting it out on this side because you have this arm in the way. But we're gonna pry this cotter pin out and remove this castle nut now. I'll fast forward a little bit to, for the sake of me fighting with this stinking cotter pin. So now that that cotter pin's out, we'll get our 24 millimeter socket. I'm gonna get an impact for time's sake. Uh, you can use your breaker bar and your ratchet, it all works the same. The only thing I've noticed using an impact on this side being a lot easier is as you're torquing with that uh, breaker bar, your knuckle here is wanting to move as you're pushing. So if you've got an impact, I recommend using it. If not, you need to just be aware that you're gonna be fighting this knuckle a little bit. Once you get it all the way over, you'll be able to break, break it loose with your breaker bar. But let me get this nut off and grab my pickle fork and we'll get this side out. Now your nuts off and you're just gonna drive your pickle fork in the bottom there. It might give you a little bit of trouble, but you'll get it. There's also specialty tools that you can buy to make this a little bit easier or get an air hammer. But I just like beating on it. I Well, as you can see, my Harbor Freight Pickle Fork didn't withstand the test. I'm just gonna get a regular hammer and a punch and knock that out the rest of the way. It's, it's pretty much most of the way out. So there you have it. That's how you remove your tie rods. Um, whenever you take these ends out, the driver's side is reverse thread and the passenger side is regular thread. Your new parts are gonna look identical. Just figure out which one's reverse thread and it goes over here. Um, whenever you take these out, count the number of spins. So say that it takes 16 spins to remove this end. You wanna put the new one in at 16 spins. That way your alignment isn't gonna be perfect, but you can get it close enough 
to get to the alignment shop safely. Um, the two ends that I got, which are on back order, um, were $51. So you're looking at about 100 bucks in parts. Um, if you have any questions, comment down below. If you like my videos, hit the subscribe button, and you all have a great day.